All right, yeah. we are back on a very special episode of Line for Line. I have two phenomenal guests in the building today. My name is Devon, as you know. I will start with you, young lady. You can introduce yourself. I am Tiffany Wells. I have two daughters entering the ninth grade. All right, and how about you, sir? My name is John Sakura. I'm the owner and the director of education at the Sylvan Learning Center here in Kenosha. Yes, sir. And with today's episode being all about investing, investments, we will be talking about investing in education for our youth and not necessarily the youth. Ed adults need their education as well, too. But before we start, sir, I know a really close friend that knows you as well, too, who had a few words to say about you. So I'll go ahead and play that for you. Uh, they're a very nice family, uh, very, very helpful to everybody. Um, John's I'm actually sorry, done this. Uh, play from the beginning. Actually done this. What can I say about John Sakura and the Sakura family? Uh, they're a very nice family, uh, very, very helpful to everybody. Um, John's actually done a ton. The Sakura family's actually done a ton for the community, uh, uh, including my kids. Uh, uh, they always recognize, what I love about them, they always recognize when kids um, are in need that need that extra boost of confidence. No matter what they're doing, no matter what they're wearing, no matter what they're, uh, John and Mona are really good uh, people uh, that always help you out with your kids. Uh, uh, give them that little extra boost of confidence. Um, so uh, they're a great family, but that's all I can say about them. Uh, Sylvan is great. Sylvan helped out so many people. Um, and uh, they're a nice, giving, big family that always give back to everybody. But they're great. And just like that, sir, wow. how, do you, how do you feel about that? That's uh, it's wonderful to hear those types of things. Were you able to tell the voice? I could not tell the voice. Christina Castillo Vasquez. Oh my goodness! Yeah, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah, yeah. Now I now I can tell the voice. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> she has a wonderful, humongous family as well. Yeah, yeah. She's great people. She's great yes. people. So let's start this episode right. Just right. tell us a little bit about you, sir. So, um, well, I was a high school teacher at uh, Trumper about twenty five years ago, mm -hmm. and uh, my wife and I wanted to start a business with my brother, and my brother's a investment type person and we heard about sylvan flew out to baltimore um called my mom borrowed money from her mm -hmm. borrowed money from my brother and <laughs> started sylvan on monday got married two months later had a kid six months later and here we are yes sir happens fast now why is it sylvan why is it that's the route that you chose uh well we wanted to be sure that we were working with a company that gave us the freedom to teach the way we wanted to teach and didn't have too many barriers. Mm -hmm. And Sylvan works on what's called best practices. So we believe that a lot of people know how to educate yes, sir. and that we can't restrict ourselves to just saying our formula is the only one that works. Um, so we don't prescribe to that. We're willing to listen to everybody's opinions. Um, in the end, you know, we make the final decisions on how we implement our programs. But I was just talking to Tiffany that we, that's one of the things we just talked about. I said, some of the curriculum we're going to use today was designed by me and some was designed by others mm -hmm. that, that I feel fits what these students need going into ninth grade. Yeah. Now, Tiffany, as a parent with children at Sylvan, what's the one takeaway that you say that you've gained from bringing your children to Sylvan? Um, I, I'm hoping that it's going to be confidence, yeah. you know, like learning this stuff, but also going into the classroom and not be like, okay, I can understand this or the confidence of knowing they can ask. Yeah. They've already, you know, been because all summer was virtual mm -hmm. you know you got to do half and half if you wanted to but I, all my kids were virtual yeah so that's like the main thing knowledge and confidence yeah that i what i hear about um virtual it, it could be a setback as well too because a lot of kids are hands-on learners mm -hmm. you know um yes it's good for the comfortability and convenience you know but not every kid will be able to learn that way just because they need yep. someone to walk them through it, you know what I'm correct, saying? And correct. when you deal with human interaction, 
you could take a little bit more Definitely. away from it as well, yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So when did you start silving in Kenosha, sir? 1998. 1998? Yes. Oh, my gosh. I was five years old. <laughs> so let me let me tell you this funny story, because obviously Sylvan has all of the commercials and everything <laughs> like that. And with me growing up in Kenosha as well, too, I would ride past it all the time on Green Bay Road. And I would always tap my mom, say, Mom, I'm ready to get started there. I'm ready to get started there, you know. That's awesome. But unfortunately, she said, oh, I don't think you need it just yet. You know, maybe wow. once you get older like preparing for the ACTs and things like that, then maybe. But now if you're already reading at like a high school level and elementary and stuff like that as well too. But yeah, those are some pretty good commercials as well too. They were. I mean, uh, I used to love going to Sylvan conferences when they would preview the next year's commercials. And mm -hmm. with the advent of social media and the takeover of the internet and cable, and it's just too hard to spend advertising dollars that way now. So Sylvan has chosen to do all um social media advertising and mm -hmm. Google search and things like that. So mm -hmm. we don't have those great commercials anymore. Yeah, 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 yeah. For those listeners who are at home and may not know where Sylvan is located, where can we find Sylvan? Oh, uh, we're on Green Bay Road, South Green Bay Road, so south of Highway 50. Um, you know, we always say we're just past Meyer now because Meyer is the, the big store out there. And if you hit the railroad tracks going south, you pass this up. Yeah, yeah, nice, nice. That's so funny, Sylvan. Sylvan is one of those great places. Can you tell us a little bit about the things that you guys offer and what you prepare people for? Uh, well, we have programs and students, like the youngest student we have right now for the summer is four years old. Um, and four they're years kind old. of doing some pre-K prep. So I think one of the things that his mother saw was that he was just not actively involved with other kids. Mm -hmm. um, very introverted young man and spent a lot of time at home and with his parents. So at Sylvan, we have small groups, so he's in with two other students, so he's been able to develop the confidence, like Tiffany said, uh, to kind of talk in front of other people and participate. Yeah. Um, and we also work on like all kinds of skills. So he's learning how to, how to share, he's learning how to do his own work, he's also learning how to work with others. I think that's one of the things, you know, in today's world, especially with COVID, so many people were at home doing so many things that everything became theirs and they forgot how to work with other people and how yeah. to be collaborative and things like that. And that's a big part of going back to school, you know, going back to school, you're going to be, you know, in small groups, you're not going to be in breakout rooms. You're going to be back to where you were and it's going to take some time to get kids used to that. Again. Yes, sir. So now once a kid signs up, like how long would you say the process usually is for you to get them ready for the next stage of your, de or the desired goal? Um, well, everybody has different goals. You know, mm -hmm. we kind of, we, we, we tell parents right from the get go, if you're not ready to commit to at least three months to see some type of change, then we're not the place for you. Mm -hmm. uh, it, it takes, you know, you have to identify what the true problem is. And although we do do diagnostic assessments, um, those don't always tell you what the true problem is. So we could have a student who, who is showing behind on a diagnostic test, but then when we meet them and start working with them, their, their skills are there. Mm -hmm. And then we'll find that they just didn't have the confidence to commit to an answer or they were skipping steps when they did the test or they just thought the test didn't mean anything so they skipped through it so what we it takes anybody who works with students time to understand why they're struggling mm -hmm. why they fell behind and um you know we can't do it so we say you know give us three months and in those three months if you're not seeing what you want after you've committed to it then we'll like let you go yes, but sir. it's really hard for us to tell somebody to leave Mm -hmm. You know, we, we have goals and we always tell parents, we tell the kids when when you when we see that you're independent and that you coming to Sylvan is just you doing work, then we'll tell you that it's time to go. So, you know, we, we used to have a guarantee where we said we raise your one full grade level in 36 hours. Oh, wow. And then Sylvan dropped that guarantee. But at our Sylvan here in Kenosha, we still abide by that. So we say if you give us 36 hours of continuous instruction, we're going to raise your scores by one full grade level. So if you take an exam or a diagnostic with us and, you know, you're three grade levels behind and then we learn that you're really not three grade levels behind, we're going to retest you. Yeah. So we, we retest students like two, three times um, before that 36 hour mark to make sure we're meeting goals. But um, our ACT prep program is a little shorter than that. It's 24 sessions. We do four hours of um, the reading, four hours of math, four hours of science, four hours of English. And then whatever subject was their worst, we add more hours to. So yeah. we do have one program that's a little shorter. Um, but you're not under any obligation to stay. We don't have you sign contracts or papers. We just say as long as it's working and you're hitting the goals that you see for your child and your child feels comfortable, then you should continue. Yeah. Um, we had one student started with us when he was in kindergarten and 
he came to us all the way till he graduated um, from Minnesota. Um, oh, wow. And now he's going to Marquette to finish his legal degree. So, and he still comes in every now and then for help. Oh, wow. Look so. at that. So I have a serious question, two part question that mm -hmm. I can incorporate the both of you in, but how important is confidence when it comes to like test taking homework, things of that nature? Um, it's next to knowing the material is the most important thing. So I work with a lot of adults. Um, actually on last week, a, a young lady came in who I was helping to pass her uh, NCLEX exam to be a certified nurse. Mm -hmm. And I told her, I said, I can't teach you the material because I don't know it. We don't have time for that. So and she said, I know the material. I just can't drive to that testing center, sit down and pass the test. So all we did, we met twice a week for an hour, and all we did was talk about confidence, motivation, what you're going to think about on the way to the test, what you're going to say to yourself when you get stuck, how you're going to deal with things. Um, she she came running into the center, yeah, and she actually just wrote a really nice Google review for us in Spanish. Um, nice. and she passed, yeah. So she was thrilled. Um, and it's the same all the way down. You know, when when we meet um, like middle school students. Uh, that's probably the toughest time for somebody to have the confidence to raise their hand and to answer a question and to be involved. Um, so we, we tell them, like, if you're the one who does that and it doesn't work out for you, then come back and tell us. Yeah. But if it does work out for you, then just keep doing it. You don't got to do it every day. But if you could ask two questions a week and answer two questions a week and just kind of build from there. Yeah. So, you know, and then in high school, it's it's all over the place. Like my daughter. She probably didn't ask or answer a question all of ninth grade. And then last year, before, I'm your Huckleberry. before COVID started, she was really involved in school. Um, and then actually during online learning, she was really involved because it was kind of um, secret. Mm -hmm. She could just type in the answers and she could have her, uh, her camera off, but still click on her mic. So, you know. Everybody's all over the place with that, and everybody has their struggles, whether you're 4, 14, or 40. You know, mm -hmm. we all struggle with confidence in different situations. So. Yes, sir. Now, as a parent who who's taken your kids to the Sylvan, what is it about the teaching method that you have to offer that you say, all right, I may be good at this, but I need more help, you know? Because I always say this to, like, the various jobs that I've been at. Mm -hmm. Someone may be good at a certain job doesn't necessarily make them a great teacher to train someone else for that job, if that makes sense. Yeah. So, like, what do you want to get? <laughs> so how important is the teaching method, you know, that you have to offer to your kids? Oh, that I have to mm -hmm. offer to my kids? Yes, ma'am. My teaching method? I mean, I help them with as much as I can. But when it comes to, like, confidence, like, I know this is the answer, but am I confident enough to say that's the answer? Mm -hmm. That's where I need somebody else to be there. You know what I mean? That's mm -hmm. also being, like, no, that is you're you're good. You're that's you be confident in what you're what you're picking because that's the right one. Mm -hmm. One thing about my girls is they're very homebound. Even before the virtual, like they're at home constantly. So now having that virtual learning and like you said, she was just able to type in an answer and be like, Okay, that's my answer or just send in the paper. Now she's gonna be with a you know, they'll be with students to have the confidence to ask, like, I do need help on this or just come home to me and I'm like um, looking at it like, yeah, I don't remember this in my ninth grade, yeah. you know, so it, it, I think it'll help them a lot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you touch on that, John? Um, uh, I can because I think Tiffany hit a really good point is that, um, you know, during the pandemic, when, it, when people we were at home, parents were asked to do a lot and answer a lot of questions that maybe they weren't comfortable answering. And then they try to Google answers and you get all caught up and stuff like that. Google's so, the worst. Um, <laughs> you know, what I appreciate most about Tiffany's answer is that is that she would say, that's the one and you need to be confident in it, you know? And some of us got caught up when we were helping our kids that I have to make sure they got a hundred on this. And uh, I, I was doing that. And then all of a sudden I said to myself, that's not what we're supposed to be doing. We're supposed to be guiding them to finding the answers. So we talked more about when we had parent meetings and we did some Zoom meetings with parents, we would say to them, your role at home should be the same. It would be if the kids were in school, your yeah. role is to give them the opportunity, the tools and the methods to find the answer on their own. That's long-term learning. Um, you know, we, we can all sit there and find every answer for our kid why they play video games and they'll get an A, yeah. <laughs> but that's, that's not going to get them there. So the way Tiffany approaches it is exactly what you should do, you know, um, do the best you can guide them in the right direction and then say, that's your answer. And if it's wrong, 
then you need to ask your teacher why it's wrong and we need to learn from that. And I think, you know, that's true in the pandemic or not in the pandemic, but mm -hmm. that was really a role thrust upon parents that most of us, even educators, weren't ready for. Yeah. How often would you say that the education system is changing, though, you know, because let's say me, I'm 28 years old. Things that I learned in high school, I'm pretty sure they may be extremely different from the things that my father may have learned right. when he was in high school. Yeah, it, it changes constantly. I mean, um, Kenosha Unified just adopted a, a new math curriculum. So they, they just flipped it over and, and bought a new series of books, which is very good, by the way. Um, so you always have to be on the cutting edge of what's going on. And when, you know, at Sylvan and KUSD is very good at sharing things with us so we know what's coming and we can have um, the manuals and, and the answer keys and, and the process. And they even let us join in on their, on their training and things like that. But I think one of the things that Tiffany I was talking about was when you get, you know, into high school, teachers aren't just looking for the answer anymore. They want to know how you got the answer, where you found it, where's your evidence. You know, it's um, evidence-based reading is, is huge in the education system right now. So if you can't find your evidence, you're still going to get a bad score mm -hmm. if you don't support that evidence. And that's one of the things I put in the binders is I know what, what what's coming in ninth grade and what these students need to see. So when we're doing the program here here at Jockey, I want them maybe not to know exactly what to do, but to be able to say to themselves, I remember seeing that. I know I can do this. And uh, I think that's one thing you know that all your listeners should kind of kind of think about is what are you going to do in the month of August to help your kids get ready to walk into a school perhaps for the first time in 18 months? Mm -hmm. Like what are you doing at home to make that better? You yeah. know, all those trips and all the fun things that we all had to do with our families because they were all put on hold. It's got to come to an end. Mm -hmm. It just does. And it's time to start being focused on what's going to happen in September and how am I going to make this easier for my, my kids, my kids' teachers, my kids' school, and my community. What am I going to do? And what you can do is just start looking you know, up things like text, evidence-based reading. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> no and then worries. you can look at pre-algebra skills. If your kid's going into ninth grade, see what they remember about sign numbers, see what they remember about fractions and decimals and ratios and proportions. You can't just send them back into school and, and say, okay, it's up to you to get this all fixed after 18 months. It's, it's not going to work. It's just impossible, right? It's impossible. Right. Yes, sir. So now as a person who has a four-year-old who's getting ready to send them off to pre-K, all mm -hmm. that stuff like that, what would be the best advice that you would give to keep our kids sharp, you know, and keep those skills fresh in their head and make sure you incorporate maybe fun things so they, so they crave to learn more? Yeah. With, well, with four-year-olds, it's all about proper interactions right mm -hmm. now. And, you know, of course, everything that makes somebody a successful kindergartner, you know, and, and those things tend to change as well. But, you know, really what, what pre-K is designed for is to, to show students that you can be away from your, you know, support at home, go into this building and have a successful, fun day and begin to learn. So that, you know, that's what we really focus on with, with our, our pre-K students is, you know, what is learning? Mm -hmm. What is your role in learning? Um, you know, and I, and I think that's something that's really not touched upon enough is like students don't really understand what their role is. You know, is my role just to sit in this desk and then <laughs> finish a worksheet? You know, what is your role as a four-year-old when you go in there? Well, your role is to interact, to develop listening skills, to learn how to follow directions, and to state your opinion and to tell when something's going well and when something's a struggle. Yeah, yeah. So that's really what the focus is at that age. Yeah. How would you walk parents through like maybe their kid not passing a test or maybe having to be held back or knowing that they need to work on things a little bit extra? How do you walk the parent through that process? Because me as a parent, I may, I just feel like maybe I would be kind of devastated. Like, oh, no, my kid's not, not mm -hmm. up to the curb right now, you know, so I feel like I would yeah. have to like stress for the answers and the solution. Yeah, I think one of the the first step is to is to get parents away from the blame game mm -hmm. um, and to find where that responsibility really falls. You know, and there, there's plenty of people to point the finger at and uh, really to try to figure out how did we get to where we are? So when we test somebody at Sylvan, I, I will tell them, uh, I said, I'm going to make a guess at what year your child fell behind and, and what happened. And uh, I'll, I'll state it to them with no real knowledge of their situation. And they'll be like, well, that's exactly what happened. You know, of grandma passed away when they were in fourth grade or um, we moved um, and it always it's, it's pretty obvious and, mm -hmm. and I think what parents need to know is when you feel like your kids falling behind they are 
yeah they're falling behind and it's time for you to, to take action and not just to wait so if you have to wait for your kid to fail a test to know whether or not they're studying then you're not doing your job at home and uh it, this was really hard for me to talk about when i first opened sylvan and now that i've been doing it for 20 years and i've heard and met so many parents um i'm just like we don't have time it's just like here's what i think here's what I believe the problem is and here's what you can do at home and here's what we can do here and uh, here's what we can ask your teachers to do and then we got to move on yeah. um, and some people appreciate that and, and some don't but I'm to the point where I'm like we need solutions for problems and that's why I'm so happy like to be here at Jockey because they're looking for a solution mm -hmm. they want to help this community and, and help these kids and, and make things move forward um, you know, and those people are over the place. It's just like nobody seems to be able to come together in one place and make it happen. Mm -hmm. There's so many little things going on all over the place, and nobody's kind of bringing it all together right now. So that's what we really have to do. Yes, sir. So as we get ready to close out, young lady, tell us maybe one of the most things that you are excited for your kids about for Silver. Um, The most exciting thing? Mm -hmm. Them getting out of the house <laughs> and coming to learn, basically. That's That's a big one. Yeah. Cause like I said, they stay home. So being confident and coming here to start for starters, because one's, one's like, yeah, mom, I'll do it. And the other one's like, I'm doing it because you're making me. Yeah. So, you know, I got to let it like, it'll help her. It'll be telling her. Yeah. Like today, this morning, like it's going to help you. I know if my brother did Sylvan. Oh, wow. yeah. He's already I think he's your age, I believe, 28. Nice. And he did Sylvan and my grandma seen the commercials. She put him in it and he'll even tell you. And he is a very quiet person, though it helped me a lot. So I got to have him on board to tell my other one, like, yeah. So I, I, I think the biggest thing is just confidence and, no, and learning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm hoping. Well, yeah. What my wife tells everybody, um, all the parents and guardians and grandmas and grandpas, when they, when they drop the kids off, is don't worry about how they feel coming in. Just watch how they feel leaving. And when they leave, and you don't think that they're leaving in the right frame of mind, then come and tell us. Mm -hmm. But 99.9% .9 of the time, when, when a student leaves a successful um, learning engagement, whether it's at school or at Sylvan or at their aunt's house or a tutor's house, they leave more confident. They leave with a different swagger. They leave knowing that that was an hour of time well spent. Yeah. Um, and that's what we always say, you know, and that's what I tell kids right when I meet them. So I still teach at Trumper High School, um, three, three algebra classes. Oh, wow. And I say to them, I said, don't worry about my class. When you come in here, you come in here with whatever attitude you want. I'm not going to ask you to come in here prepared to learn. I'm not going to make demands on how your mental state needs to be. I said, I'll get you there. You just have to be open minded enough to let me help you get there. Yes, sir. And then when you walk out the door, tell me how you feel. Yeah. And, uh, you know, I think that we need just a little bit more of that in yeah. general. I yeah. think it's going to be good. I know it's going to be good. Definitely. And that's why I'm here to help with my podcast. You know, you I'm definitely here to help the community, the community that I was raised in, you know, yeah. and I know that kids start, kids start like every, kids are the future, you know, and just me speaking from not having like that type of outlet to go to when I was a kid, obviously it's great, you know, but I have one last question for yeah. you before we close out, sir. Absolutely. What's your satisfaction level out of seeing these kids come to you and then they leave knowing that they took, they took something from it, you know? It's endless. I mean, we, we, we still have students that we, and we've been doing this for 20 something years. We actually had our first grandchild of a student, student come to Sylvan last year. Oh, wow. So, I mean, that's what really gives me the satisfaction when people just stop by or when we're down at the fireworks or we're going for a walk and, and they're just like, they know us and, and they have something positive to say, like Vinicio's mom. Yeah. Um, you know, meeting those, those, those people is the set. Of, it's like endless, you know, and that's why we keep doing it. When we started so when we said, we're gonna do this for 10 years, then we're going to move on to something else. And now we're here 22 years later. I think, yeah. And still here. greatly appreciate you sticking around and helping the community. Yes. And with that being said, we just wrapped up another amazing episode of line for line. Appreciate the two of you for coming. I appreciate your Thank help. You. Thank you. You calling? Are you listening? Tune in every week. Line for line. Oh yeah, I'm gonna laugh, laugh